If you have your Bibles, I trust you do. I hope you do. Hebrews chapter 10 this morning. Hebrews 10. From the cradle to the grave, Tina said, and for the last several weeks we've been talking about how Scripture directs us, points us to Christ. From Genesis to Revelation. It shouts the glory of Christ. It shouts who Jesus is, the Messiah. It shouts His name, Jesus. It announces His coming. God announced, His Father announced His coming in Genesis 3.15. The coming of the, the Savior, the coming of the Messiah. The sinless one. The one, the only one that can pardon mankind. The Lord Jesus. In the Old Testament, way back in Leviticus, in the early chapters, the Lord God gave us the Levitical system, the system of offerings. There's an old system it mentions in Hebrews chapter 10. It fell under the law of Moses and it was, it was a system that the Lord God appointed to us. But all it was doing was eventually you would find that it pointed ultimately to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The birth of Christ, the birth of Jesus, provides to us a way to God and reconciliation. Once and for all. Once and for all. In the old system in Leviticus, in the early chapters, they had to sacrifice time and time and time and time and time again. I think I mentioned it in the past. It was a literal bloodbath. It was a constant reminder of man's sin. It was a constant reminder that, that man cannot do enough. It reminded man constantly Amen. of his sinfulness. Jesus would come, he would be born to die. The old sacrificial system wasn't good enough. In reality, the early chapters in Leviticus preview to us Isaiah 53. It announces to us Isaiah 53. It was only temporary. It pointed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we'll see in Hebrews chapter 10, it mentions that. It mentions the beauty of Christ, the beauty of the Messiah, the beauty of Jesus through the blood, right? We celebrate Christmas and we see the lights. We see the snow, at least some parts of the country do. We see the presents. We see the family feast come this Friday. For some, if they can get together. For others, there will just be a little. Man creates that part of Christmas, doesn't he? But just like Etta May said before, Christmas 
ultimately is this, Jesus being born to die, to suffer on the cross. And then three days later, be resurrected. But we don't like to think of it that way. But that's what it's about. In Isaiah chapter 10, listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 10. We'll read down through some of Isaiah chapter 10 this morning. And For the law, it's, it's having a shadow of good things to come. Not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto what? Perfect. For the law is this. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. It was a dim preview of, of good things to come. Not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under the system that we repeated again and again, year after year, it says. But they were never, never able to provide a perfect cleansing for those who come to worship. Amen. The one who provides the perfect cleansing, the one who provides it perfectly, is Jesus Christ. Jesus the Messiah, right? Amen. Jesus in His offering of Himself for our salvation was the good thing being mentioned here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law is a shadow of a good thing. What good things? The things of Jesus, right? What He will do. What He is born to do. The shadow of those things. The law never replaced Jesus. The law it would be like wanting a picture over the real thing, wouldn't it? The law in Leviticus chapter 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 it was a shadow, a preview. Of things to come. If you remember back in Luke chapter 2. Remember I think last year we, we looked at around this time. We looked at Luke chapter 2. Where Mary and Joseph. After a certain amount of days would would take the Lord Jesus. It says in verse 22, we'll just read it, Luke 2, 22, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought Him to Jerusalem to present Him to the Lord. As it is written, written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice unto, according to that which is said of the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. He anticipated, he, he waited with anticipation, who? Jesus. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death, Simeon should not see death, before he had seen the Lord Jesus, the Lord's Christ, the Father's Messiah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. The Spirit led him into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms. Simeon took him up, blessed God, and said, Lord, now let us, thou servant, depart in peace according to the word. For my eyes have seen the salvation. Simeon lifts up the Lord Jesus, lifts up... 
lifts up baby Jesus and he says, Lord, Father, now let me depart. For my eyes have seen the salvation. For my eyes have seen the one. The law of Moses, the sacrificial system, couldn't fix this mess. But this one I hold in my hands. He is here to redeem mankind once and for all. It is what? Finished. Once and for all. Back in Leviticus chapter 1, it was always over and over and over and over again, wasn't it? Leviticus 2, Leviticus 3, Leviticus 4. It talked about always over and over. It was never enough. All it did was, was, was provide a what? A sort of covering. That's all it did. It was provided a sort of covering for man's sin. But Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, He doesn't provide the covering. He completely takes it away, doesn't He? You notice the difference. For those whose faith lies in Him, their sins are completely taken away. God the Father in whose reasoning gave us the animal sacrifices over and over and over again. But according to Psalm verse 40 verse or chapter 40 verse 6, he took no delight in animal sacrifices. He only took delight in who? His son. His son. That's what excited Simeon so much when he finally walked into the temple and there it was sitting before him, being held before him was the Redeemer of the world. He's here. He's here. The Redeemer of the world is finally here. And Simeon in Luke chapter 2 raises him up and lifts him up and praises the Father for the Son. For the gift of the Son. What a beautiful picture. Back in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 2 For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience, what? No more conscience of sin. If, if, if the old Levitical system, if the old system under the law of Moses, if it could have provided a perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. Right? It would have stopped. For the worshipers, it says, what? They would have been purified once and for all time. Their feelings of guilt would have been disappeared. It would have been over. There would have been no more need to bring another animal in. It's a literal bloodbath. I'm telling you it was. Over and over and over again. That's what makes the beauty of Jesus and His redemptive work. It's once and what? For all. There's no more to add to it. You get a little bit of different glimpse of Christmas. Of who Christ is. Of who the Messiah is, of who Jesus is, you get a little bit different glimpse when you when you go into the Old Testament and you see that time after time after time after time it was a drive, it was a push, it was a drive to the Lord Jesus. Even then. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again of made of sins every single year. 
All those sacrifices did in the old Levitical system, the old system under the law of Moses, all it did was remind the sinful man, sinful humanity of their sins year after year after year after year. That's all it did. Reminded them constantly. But what happens to us is, and we've made mention of this in the past, oh, we've, we've laid in grace so long. We've, we've laid in the, in the belly of who Christ is so long and who Jesus is so long. We've enjoyed it so much. And in our humanness, we've almost just made a mess out of it, haven't we? We take his birth and we and we commercialize it. We take his his resurrection and we commercialize it, don't we? We forget its deep spiritual meanings if we're not careful. I'm not saying not to enjoy this Christmas season, by far enjoy it. I enjoy every single day of it. But keep, keep it in its rightful place. Keep Christ, keep the Messiah, keep Jesus where Jesus needs to be. The Redeemer of the world. The once and for all sacrifice. In verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 10, it says, But instead those sacrifices, what? They only reminded them year after year. It was just a remembrance again of sins year after year. That's all it did. For it is not possible but the, that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. It's not possible, is it? It's not possible for the blood of animals to take away sins once and for all. That is not possible. They only covered, they never removed. Notice the difference. They only covered, never removed. Wherefore, here's the kicker, here it is, we don't know who the writer, who the author of Hebrews was, who the Spirit of God inspired to write Hebrews, but man, here it is, right here, wherefore, when he comes into the world, who, who's the he, Jesus, Wherefore, when He comes into the world, when Jesus comes into the world, and another translation, that is why when Christ came into the world, when He comes into the world, we'll celebrate Friday, December 25th, is the day that has been set aside for the remembrance of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice, offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In other words, Christ, when Christ come into the world, he said to his Father, You did not want animal sacrifices or, or, or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. I am the ultimate sacrifice. The once and for all. Never again to be. There will never be another. It is me, Father. It's me. That's what makes His denial of Him from humanity so horrific. Because listen, there's not another. There's not another. There never will be another. 
There's not another God yesterday, nor will there be another God today or tomorrow. There's only one Redeemer. And Jesus says, I am Him. I was born for this. This is what the Father willed for me to do. And then you see in the world we live in today, yesterday and in the future, man, time and time and time again refusing Him for who He is. The Redeemer of the world. Or maybe making a mockery out of His birth. Maybe making a mockery out of His resurrection. Maybe making a joke out of who He is. Listen, when Simeon held Him up, Simeon held Him up and said, This is the Redeemer. Now, Father, take me home. I'm ready to go. God's sovereignty, the Father's sovereignty on display. The Father told Simeon before that nothing, nothing, Simeon, will ever happen to you until you lay eyes on my Redeemer to the world. God's sovereignty on display again. The plan was going to be the plan. The beauty of Christ. Can you imagine Mary and Joseph? What is Simeon talking about? A redeemer. A redeemer of the world. In burnt offerings it says... Sacrifices for sin, thou hast no what? Pleasure. Father, you are not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. That's not what pleases you. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of this book, it is written of me. To do what? Thy will, O God. In other words, Jesus says, Look, I said, I have come to do your will, O God, O Father. As it is written about me in scriptures, I have come to do your will. It's about your will, Father. Remember that. We say it a lot here. Remember that. It's about the will of the Father. It's about God's will in your life and in my life. You be very careful. Don't you just don't move around here in your everyday life and think it's about you because it's not about you. Amen. If it's about you, then you're God. You created yourself, your own little mini God in and of yourself. It's not about you. It's about Him. Remember in, remember in John chapter 17, when Jesus was praying to the Father, John chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, He's praying to the Father and and simply put, paraphrase, and he says, Father, I'm done. Everything you've given for me to do, I've done it what? Bob said it in the past, perfectly. I've done it perfectly. There's nothing to add to it. I have done it. I have done your will, Father. It is complete. It's coming to completion. I have done your will. Again, he says what? In verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 10. Then said I, O Lord, I come into the volume of this book as is written of me to do thy will. His book is written of me. It's about me. There it is. There it is. Hebrews are tough. Hebrew, Hebrews is a, for me, Hebrews is a tough book. For me it is. It's tough. Sometimes difficult to understand. 
above when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither had us pleasure therein, which are offered by what? By the law. Christ said, you did not want animal and sacrifice or sin offerings or burnt offerings or any other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them. Though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish what? The second. I come to cancel out the first covenant in order to put the second one into effect. That's why you're celebrating Christmas in five days right there. That's it. To take away the first and put in the second. It's all about Christ. Always has been. Always will be. Amen. Oh God, He takes away the first that He may establish the second. Jesus says the Father will take away the first system to establish the second. The second system is who? It's Jesus. Be very careful, like I said 10 minutes ago, that you don't chase the worldly system around of entertainment Amen. around this time of year. Amen. A pleasure. But that, hey, you enjoy those things, but keep them where they belong. Amen. Keep them where they belong. I come to do thy will. Oh God, you take away the first that the second may be established by the will, by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for what? All. Amen. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. In a few verses, Jesus talks about His birth and then talks about His death and then talks about His resurrection. It's incredible. It's incredible. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the Old Covenant, remember the Old Covenant, we just got done mentioning the, Levitic, the Levitical Covenant back in Leviticus, Old Testament, the priest stands and ministers before the altar, what? Day after day after day after day, doesn't he? Amen. Sacrifice over and over and over again. Which truly never takes away sin, it just covers it. But as we mentioned at the beginning, but this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the, at the right hand of what? God. But our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, offered himself up as a single sacrifice for sins of many, good for all time. Afterwards, he sat down in a place of honor at God's right hand. Amen. Where he sits today. Amen. He found his place. Shouldn't use the word found, but you know what I'm saying. After he done the Father's will, he goes and he sits at the right side of the Father. It is finished. It is complete. Amen. Nothing left to do. Nothing left. Amen. Nothing added to it, David said.
He offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sits down, it says, in a place of honor at God's right hand. In verse 12, and then verse 13, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his, his footstool. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made under his feet, a footstool under his feet. There he waits until the appointed time. There he waits. Amen. In just a few verses, a little bit more than a few, like I just said, we have the birth, we have the death, we have the resurrection, we have the setting up of his eternal kingdom. By who? The Messiah. Amen. Jesus. It's a beautiful picture of who he is. As we close this morning, you be very careful that you don't lose the picture. You be very careful that you don't take who He is, truly is, and what He's truly done in Scripture and what He's truly going to do. You be very careful that you don't take that and tuck it aside. Amen. You be very careful that you keep who He is foremost, forefront in your life. What He has done, what He is going to do. Because let me tell you something. That one who we celebrate his birth in four or five days, that one will come back one day. He will come back. And he'll come back like a lion. And he's going to come back with judgment. Where it says he put all his enemies as a footstool under his feet, you can rest assured that's exactly what will happen. Amen. Don't you get your little self all tore up about the circumstances in which we live in this nation, in which we live in this world. As David said at the beginning, as Bob said at the beginning, this stuff has happened perfectly. The author of Hebrews, the spirit author of Hebrews is the one who's controlling the events of today. Amen. So you just calm down. Go and live your life and serve Him. And serve Him well. Amen. And remember, whoever it was, the human author, the one that penned it down through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Hebrews, remember what this guy had to say. That the Levitical law, of the law of Moses, way back before this, was a shadow, was a preview of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what He is going to do. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank You and we praise You. You just be glorified and honored. You be exalted. We love You. To you goes the glory and the honor and the praise. Lord, as we look upon these pages of Scripture this morning, Lord, we see you in every verse. A man and woman can look in Leviticus and see you. Anywhere in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, we can find you. It's all about you. It's not about us. May we remember that as we celebrate in a few days your incarnation, your birth. Jesus, may we remember it's about you. And as you presently sit at the right hand of your Father waiting for that appointed day waiting for the appointed day to go and to get your children. We love you. And Lord, if there's any here this morning 
that have never called upon you for salvation. May they understand that the pictures of a baby in the manger, that baby is no longer a baby. Baby is but a judge, the holy righteous judge. A judge who will come one day and pour out his wrath on all unbelief. Maybe they see that and call upon him. Bring us back here this evening at 6 o'clock to listen to what the Phillips family has to say about their mission work overseas, Lord, and what they've given up a lot to serve you. They've given up probably more than most that I know would give up to serve you. They've walked away from much for you. We love you. We thank you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.